When I first got into Blender, it took me so much effort to do simple things. But with time, I learned all of the hotkeys and making scenes became easy and very enjoyable, in fact. So now, sometimes I model just for fun. Most of these, for example, were speed modeled in a single stream. I believe that if it takes you at least several days to make something, you will think twice before even opening Blender. But if you can at least make a rough 3D sketch in just one setting, you are much likely to do it. So long story short, after I learned Blender, after I learned all of the hotkeys, I realized that it's not quite enough. So I decided to take it a step further. And so this video is about a Blender add-on that I made. It's free, it's on my GitHub, you can click releases here, grab the latest version, install it and use it. And in this video I'm going to talk about why I made it and what it has to offer. Let's talk about efficiency. Most of the things in Blender can be done with hotkeys, but not all hotkeys are equally efficient. For example, you probably don't look at your keyboard when you press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, but I bet you do look at your keyboard when you press Ctrl L, if your right hand is on the mouse. And when you're using Blender, your right hand is always on the mouse. You can't use Blender without a mouse. I tried. So like I said, when I got into Blender, I learned all of the hotkeys. And I learned that there is a fair amount of them that I can't press without looking at the keyboard. And it bothered me. It bothered me so much I even made a video on how to avoid using numpad in Blender because of how far away it is. It may seem like not a big deal at first, but when you think about it, those small interruptions add up. And you end up spending time trying to figure out where the buttons are instead of doing something creative. So this is the first reason I created the quick menu add-on. Hotkeys should be on the left. Now, there are only so many keys in the left part of the keyboard. How do you fit all of the operators there? And the answer, of course, is submenus. Which brings me straight to the second point. Accelerator keys are incredible. Actually, I already made a separate quick tip video on accelerator keys, but the point is when you open any menu in Blender, for example, shift A menu, instead of clicking on menu items with your mouse, you can press numbers and letters on your keyboard. For example, Shift A11 is plane, Shift A12 is cube, Shift A13 is a circle, and so on. To create an empty, you would press Shift A E1. To create a camera, you would press Shift A R, and so on. This is my preferred way of working in Blender, and this is, in my opinion, the most powerful feature of Blender. And it works in absolutely all of the context menus. External on normals, for example, is Control FF. So I took this workflow and I created an add-on that makes use of it. You can open the menu with the D key. And here, for example, you can see snapping options in the DA menu. If I want to snap with vertices, I'll press DAV. And then snapping with closest is DAC. And snapping with center is DAE. I have most of this stuff in my muscle memory by now. You'll also find, for example, transform pivot switches here. DA1, for example, is bounding box. DA2 is individual origins. And there's also transform orientations here. Normal orientation on DA5 is kind of interesting because not only it sets orientation to normal, it also sets pivot to active element. Because look, this is very convenient in my opinion. You can create geometry in edit mode and then use the normal of your active element, which is white, to transform selected geometry, which is orange. So we can move our box here on this 45 degree plane without creating a custom orientation. And also you can scale to active element and you can rotate around it. This is super convenient. And the fact that DA5 changes two things at once is another reason Quick Menu exists. That reason is better defaults. When you press DAV, not only it checks vertex for you, it also checks edge center. Because in my experience, that's what usually makes sense. In the Quick Menu, you'll also see, for example, that separate join is D11. So if I want to join two meshes, I press D11. It's much faster than Ctrl J and P. And if I want to separate selection into a separate mesh, I press D11 again. If I'm in edit mode, it will separate. And if I'm in object mode, it will join. 
And this is another core principle of the quick menu add-on. Complementary operators are unified. I don't have to even remember a separate hotkey for join and a separate hotkey for separate. Join operator doesn't even work in edit mode. It doesn't make any sense. Separate operator doesn't work in object mode, obviously. So there is no reason to have those as two separate operators, as two separate hotkeys. Another example of this will be select loop in a region and select boundary loop. Not only they are not a single button, but they're also very hard to reach. So in the quick menu, it's just D23. If you're in face mode, it will convert region to loop. And if you're in edge mode, it will convert loop to region. Very convenient, very fast to press and less keys to memorize. Same is true for mirror modifier, for example. Most of the time, you only need one mirror modifier on your model. So while pressing D44 for the first time adds a mirror modifier, pressing it again will apply it. And this is so convenient because it allows you to switch mirror modifier on and off fast. As you probably know, it can be painful to work with mirrors sometimes when you need to do something near the mirror plane. For example, if you want to extrude this as a single piece, you can't really do that. You can of course lock it on X, but you get extra geometry inside. But since adding and applying mirror is so fast with uh, this add-on, you can just apply the mirror, do your thing, and add mirror again. Or if you want to scale this part with mirror, it can be tricky. So instead you can just apply the mirror, scale, and add mirror back again. And it's all just D44. I can't state it enough how important this is to my workflow. Another example of complementary operators would be isolate in object mode and hide unselected in edit mode. As you probably know, you can't use slash in edit mode. You need to press shift H. And to unhide, you need to press alt H. So what I did instead is I unified those three hotkeys into one. It's D13 right here. The next big core principle of quick menu is operators work in any mode. For example, if you're modeling something and you suddenly decided to shade it smooth, what you would need to do without the quick menu is press tab to switch to object mode. And then while in object mode, right click and shade smooth and then tab back into the edit mode. D12 on the other hand, doesn't care what mode you're in. It will work in any mode, even sculpting mode. If you want to subdivide your object, control 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. won't work in edit mode. D45 will work in edit mode. Same goes, for example, for origin operators. By default, set origin menu is only available to you in object mode. D14 for origin to geometry will work in any mode. So you spend less time pressing buttons and more time actually modeling. The next big idea of quick menu is view dependent operators. For example, let's say I made this thing and I want to mirror it. When I add the mirror modifier by default, it mirrors on X. If I want Y, I need to uncheck X here and check Y. Not the most efficient workflow. What D44 does instead is it determines the axis by your viewport camera position. It mirrors from left to right. If you want top to bottom, you can check it yourself in the redo panel, but usually you want left to right. Another example of this are these two operators here. View select edges, for example, selects all of the edges that are parallel to the viewport camera. For example, if we Boolean something, we can, for example, D24 this face here and bevel it to get this instead of selecting those edges one by one. It's a small optimization, but I use it all the time, to be honest. Another example of view dependent operator would be DQQ to delete back facing faces. For example, let's say we added some geometry on top with the add primitive tool. If we press DQQ, it will remove the face that lies on the opposite side of your view, which is necessary if you're making, for example, a game asset because you don't want to waste the texture space. And finally, the last point of this video, the last reason quick menu add-on exists is Blender lacks some functionality. 
that I find kind of essential. For example, you can convert edges to curves in edit mode with D41. You can add circles and squares to selected faces with D35. You can extrude faces both ways with D3E. There is projection intersect on DER that allows you to do stuff like this, and it's view dependent. There is plane intersect selection and island. If you have a shape like this, for example, you can't loop through it because you can't loop through angons. But with DEQ, you can intersect the island with a plane that runs through the selected face, and that's perpendicular to your view. There is also randomize that works in edit mode. I'm not going to go through all of the operators, uh, but if I had to name a single best operator from Quick Menu, that would be B box around selection. Hands down, it's my most favorite and most frequently used operator. It creates a box or plane around selection. It's so incredibly useful, I use it all the time. You can learn more about the add on on the GitHub page. It shows how to use some of the operators, and also there is a manual page that describes all of the operators in detail. If you find any bugs or if you want to suggest features, you can write me on Discord in the Quick Menu chat channel. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next one.